Hi, this is Anarchy Production, and I'm Ron Shira. And we're here at the opening of Indira Bailey's art exhibit at the Freiburger Gallery for Penn State Berks Campus in Reading, Pennsylvania. New Jersey public school system, and she studied different educational systems in both Africa and in Japan. So she's very knowledgeable about art in education as well as being a really fine painter. Um, one of the things that I've noticed a lot about her work is, is this experiences of family, of children, of relatives, which becomes a very universal theme. Um, besides being something about the American experience, it's also the experience that every child has a relationship, for example, with the grandmother, um, with their friends, learning, for example, dance. All of these things are very, probably everybody in here has similar experience as to what she's illustrating in her painting. Um, I also see them as, um, because of this, the relative flatness, they're almost iconic. Um, and I think they'd be, they have a presence about them more so than if they would be a super photorealistic. They have a presence where you can perhaps read a little bit more into the story using your own background to kind of discuss and figure out what's going on. So, um, Indira, thank you for being here, and if you don't mind speaking about your work a little bit. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Indira Bailey, and I'm originally from Plainfield, New Jersey. Uh, as Marilyn said, I am an art teacher at Teach High School, which is not too much, not too much of an age difference. Uh, just to give you a little background about myself, I went to Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, and I started painting at a very early age. Everyone asks me, when did you start? Or how long have you been painting? And basically, I tell people all of my life, because ever since I was a child, that's basically what I did with paint. Most of my paintings are based upon daily life scenes. Most of the people I actually know, and some of them I'm in. So, but I'm part of it is probably easier. I'm just going to go around the room and just talk about the pictures that way. And if you have any questions as I'm going, you, you can also add on. I'm going to go around. A lot of people think about was Sunday morning. That was an experience that most African American women go through with the hot comb. And if you have any experience, you know, it's quite interesting. But that was something very personal to me. And to most African American women, it's something that's personal to them. Whether they enjoyed it or not, most of the time they kind of didn't. But it was something that's part of our history that continues on even today. This also was a personal friend of mine. When I was in college, I had to take, I was taking photography. So it just happened to be at her house, and I said, oh, that's it. Nice image, but she told me never to show anybody her photograph. I said, okay. So I painted the picture and said, and now the one see the people see her photograph. But that's just some of the things that I like to do. I like to paint people that everyone can relate to. The other one was Raise the Time. Raise the Time is basically the same thing. All of the boys have had their first haircut. So for me, it was like, well, I don't know how that feels, but. I know so it didn't seem like it was nice when he was screaming and yelling. So again, it's, I like to just paint things that people every day, doesn't make a difference what nationality you are, you have that experience as a, as a young boy getting your hair cut or your first time having a haircut. The next one is called Online. Online, as with some little girls dancing. I've never been in a ballet class, so it's not me and that didn't work too well with the two to one. But with the online, it's showing little girls online getting ready to start their performance. And this was a dance school that was around the corner from me. I asked the director, could I just come in and take some pictures? And she allowed me to come in and take pictures of the um, of the young girls before they start to dance. Now all of these are oil on canvas. That's my favorite medium. I am doing some other <coughs> mediums in charcoal. And of course, as a teacher, I can almost teach this about any medium, but I personally like oil paint. The next one is uh, called The Catch of the Bed. And the reason why I did a fishing piece is when I was in college, at the end of our semester, we have to display our artwork. And my grandparents came. 
And every time I so I show my grandfather my artwork, he thought it was it was nice. But I would notice that other people's artwork, he would go up to it and he would look really cool at it. And I said, why are you looking at their pictures like that? You won't look at mine like that. Because well, they have a fishing piece in it and you don't. So I was like, okay. So I paid a fishing piece and I can look at it. So my grandparents fished a lot. And that's one thing I've learned because I was three years old with being in the ocean fishing. So even though it's not a, a, a portrait of him, it's symbolic of him. So that is something that he did on a daily basis. The next one is called Nanny and Joe. Now this is my grandmother. She'll be 90 years old in March. Uh, of course, she couldn't make it. But this is also an actual portrait of her and her cat named Joe. A lot of people want to know who's Joe. It's, it's the cat. So this is also something that a lot of families have quilts. They get handed down. And century after century, years after years, a lot of people have quilts. And this is just her reading and quilt. Also, that's some box which African Americans have in quilts in their houses. If you have you know, any history of quilts, that will go to some box or something to get the slavery to give out messages to each other. This is a real, my real kindergarten class. <coughs> and I thought it would be fun because it shows different ethnic groups, it shows children, it shows colors and laughing. And I just thought this would be a really fun picture to do. Here it is. Can someone guess what they think this picture is about? There's no right or wrong answer, but don't feel like you're offending me or not. But I just I like to hear people say, when I was in college, there was a comp competition to show opposites. And I wanted to show life and death, but I didn't want to become morbid. So I showed an old woman and a young baby. It's called Watermelon Picture. Now, this is the actual portrait of my family. This is my brother, my cousin, my grandmother, this is me, and my, my cousin. And this is the actual picture in her yard. Now, a lot of people say, well, why do you have watermelon? It's not being stereotypical of what black people do. And I go, no, because it is what we do. Everyone, they have watermelon in the summertime. And it's not really a racial issue. That if you like watermelon, you like watermelon. And you have a lot of pictures with a lot of men. Most of my pictures here have children in it. and older people, but this one I thought was fun because it shows unity with men. And you go and you go into New York or different parts, you see people actually <coughs> playing checkers. And I actually took real pieces and had someone cut them for me and actually glued them onto the camp so they're actually real chess pieces. This one, Nessus Sister, and Nessus Sister too. It's nobody in particular, but this is a series that I started and just wanted to do with different women, different African American women. I wanted to show the different type of this, different kente cloth and different type of African cloth. Fill in the blue. Fill in the blue is a piece that I painted. This is the print of the original. Fill in the musical piece. It's not any particular musical artist. It's not Billie Holiday. It's not you know a particular person. But I just want to have something musical. The original is bigger than that, but I don't have that anymore. But I wanted to show this movement and yeah. color and something different to give them children and family. This quarter here, two years ago I received a Fulbright scholarship in South Africa. So I spent some time there. And these are part these three pictures here are the same village. It's a village on the eastern part of South Africa that the University of Kwasi Kuru Natal has a partnership with where they come in and they help them with the education and program. This village is a village that still has no running water, no electricity, and as you can see, they have a water pump and a little girl who is giving water. Even though it's hot in Africa, their winter was in July, and that's when I went. So this, it was cold enough to have a hat and scarf. So a lot of time, I don't think Africa gets that cold, but it does get pretty cold. And this was the Ladulu tribe. This is another picture of the Ladulu tribe that was called the Valley of a Thousand Hills, which also needs to burn in South Africa. <laughs> and last one, the Peter Gold Spirit, which is here, and also right there. Are there any questions about the picture?